Hey, hello everybody. I'm Chicken Nuggets. Uh, we're just gonna get right into it here. So the time is gonna start when I skip this cutscene. So three, two, one, skip. So this is Hugo. Uh, he's evil. You can tell just by looking at him. Um, he's also the warden of this prison called Arkham City, hence the name of the game. And he has some, or the the prison is they've essentially just walled off a huge portion of Gotham City and just threw all the criminals in there. If that sounds like a terrible idea to you, that's because it is. But uh, he's got some master plan. He calls it Protocol 10. We don't really know what that is. We're going to spend most of the game trying to figure that out. But uh, until then, we will be experiencing all of this from the perspective of Bruce Wayne. He's sort of the local billionaire, kind of like Iron Man, except he's not a superhero at all. Definitely not. So uh, we're just going to try to break out of here because we don't like being in prison. So I'll just knock over that chair like a champ and uh, use our complete lack of fighting experience to take this guy out expertly. That looked pretty painful. Take this little radio chip thing we'll need later. And, uh, ouch. Not a good hit. So we'll just walk through here. And while we're doing that, I should talk about the speedrun a little bit. So we're playing on the PC version. Uh, original release, not the remaster. And... We're playing at 62 frames per second, not 60. Uh, it's very important that we're playing at 62 because some things in this game are frame rate dependent. Uh, I will also be playing with keyboard, mouse, and controller. I'll be switching between them over the course of the run because some things are better on keyboard, some things only work on controller. So optimally, you just have to switch, which is a little awkward, but you get better at it when you do it more. And uh, another thing is we have a bunch of mouse wheel binds. So I have down on my mouse wheel bound to skipping dialogue. I have up on my mouse wheel bound to interacting with things and dive rolling. That's a little bit useful just for making sure we can interact with things as soon as they're available. And I also have, if I hold shift and mouse wheel up, that's bound to counter. That'll be particularly useful in one of the boss fights later on. So we'll get into that. Uh, this is Jack Ryder. He's a news reporter. He's also been thrown in here. Um, I should mention, I was arrested for protesting this place because Bruce Wayne doesn't like this prison because it's bad, and Jack Ryder just happened to be there. So this is the welcoming party. They're all, uh, these all look like nice people. So we've got a little bit of a fight here. So fast thing to do is just knock that guy out, and then we have to counter all these other guys, so it's just down to the RNG of the fight. And we're just going to save Jack Ryder here, or at least we're going to try to. We're not really going to succeed. Uh, this is a bit of a bad situation. Just going to take that straight to the back. Ouch. This is Penguin. He's uh, he, he also hates Bruce Wayne for some reason. Uh, some family drama or something. Uh, we're going to get out of this little predicament we've gotten ourselves into here. Uh, and after we do that, we're going to get the first skip of the run, or at least I'm going to attempt it, the intro fight skip. Uh, basically, if you dive super precisely into a dumpster, you end up on top of an invisible wall, and then you just walk from that invisible wall and you can skip the fight. It's super precise, and I might not get it. I'll give it two or three tries, see how I'm feeling. But uh, first, we're just going to get out of here. We're going to whack Penguin here, because that'll turn us around, and then we'll get counters from behind, which are significantly faster than counters from in front. We're going to somehow break out of our handcuffs. I don't know how, I don't know how Bruce pulled that one off. All right, now we're going to go for the dumpster dive. Okay, didn't quite get it. I'm going to give it another shot, because I feel pretty good about that one. There we go. And we're up. We made it. Second try is pretty good for that. They're trying to throw stuff at me. They don't really know what to do. We're just gonna parkour away as the rich people do. Uh, there's supposed to be a little dialogue trigger here, but since we skipped the fight, the dialogue trigger isn't there, so we can just advance along as normal. Shim along here, climb this ladder. Climb this ladder. Try to slide under this thing, we got it. Slide again to go straight into another shimmy. Okay, climb up. Another slide. Another ladder. We're going to jump across this gap, then we're going to try to dive roll into a cutscene. Excellent. And uh, our butler, Alfred, is going to drop off something on the roof here. Not really sure what it is. Some big capsule. I, 
I don't know. Rich people stuff, I guess. Oh, uh, hmm. Something very important I forgot to mention about Bruce Wayne. He's, uh, hmm. How do I put this? Bruce Wayne is, uh, he, he's Batman. That was, that was kind of important to the plot. I think I might have mentioned that earlier. Oh, well. Moving along. Now that, now that Batman's here, he's gonna try to save the day or something. Let's skip a little bit of dialogue here with the mouse wheel. And then we're going to hack this, uh, the radio communications here with that little chip we stole earlier to listen in on the enemy communications. Oh, something else I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, we're playing the game in Spanish. Spanish is about 12 seconds faster than English, so that's why I can't understand anything. Um, what's going on here is Catwoman is in the courthouse, and Batman's like, oh, Catwoman, she probably knows what's going on. I bet she knows what Protocol 10 is. She, she doesn't. She absolutely has no idea what that is. Uh, but we're gonna save her anyway, because uh, Two-Face is also in the courthouse, and he's pretty dangerous. So once we get off to the real gameplay here, uh, we'll get a first glimpse of gliding and how gliding is going to work. So we can we can glide and then we can like dive bomb and then pull back up into a higher glide. And then we can also grapple the things. And what we're going to be doing a lot is we're going to be grappling to things and then canceling off of them. Whoops, that wasn't quite what I had in mind. There we go. Then into another glide. Excellent. So when we, get the, when we get into the courthouse, there's going to be a fight. Uh, we're going to use something called ground takedown cancels. Basically, we quick fire the bat claw gadget at the same time as doing a ground takedown animation, and it completely cancels it, but it still takes out the guy. So there we go. That guy's done. That guy's done. Oh, that was a little sloppy. Whoops. It's a little tricky to uh, use these effectively, but if you can, it saves quite a bit of time over trying to fight them normally because you just get instant... KOs on everybody. Very nice. And we're gonna let Two-Face shoot us here. And that's it. Batman's dead. End of game. Uh, just kidding. He's actually alive somehow. Just, just a little scratch on the suit. That's it. So in that cutscene I skipped, somebody sh took a shot at us. We don't really know who, so we're gonna scan these bullet holes like the master detective we are. And we're going to learn that it came from the church. So let's head over there. Figure out what's going on. Gonna come up here, cancel off of that, try to glide just in there, perfect. All the way to the door. Okay, now when I try to enter the church, there's going to be two guys standing outside of it. We're supposed to fight them, but uh, that's slow. So we're gonna try to skip them. I'm going to cancel off of that. Pull up, stay close to the building here. And then we're gonna try to land behind them and interact with the door before they see us. Okay, we didn't get it, that's okay though. We just take these guys out pretty quickly, the same way we took out everybody else. Ground takedown cancels. Finish off the last guy with the batarang. Alright, now we have another villain. Uh, this is Harley. Harley Quinn. We're just gonna throw her into a wall here. But uh, we can't really do anything else because there's these guys with guns, and uh, guns are dangerous. So we're just gonna see how this plays out. And while she's talking to us, she's gonna walk around. Eventually she's going to leave out this door. So we're gonna try to guide her to like this corner so that she immediately just turns around and leaves when her dialogue ends. Uh, while we're doing this, we probably have time for a donation or two. Sure thing, we got $500 from Nivlak. It says, hey chicken, good luck on the run. Be sure to dive the dumpster, skip the Stacy, bat flap the Joker, and beware of the sand ninjas of the mind. Thank you. Thanks Nivlak. We got time for another one. We've also got $20 from King TDN in the form of a haiku. They say haikus are easy, but sometimes they don't make sense. Refrigerator. So, so as you saw there, Harley had to move a little bit and then go to the door, so that wasn't quite optimal. But that's okay. Uh, now we have guys with guns. Guns are bad. Um, we're supposed to use stealth or something, so let's, let's try that out. Uh, and everything is going according to plan. Okay. Okay. And stealth accomplished. That's that's how you do that. Batman might also be Superman. I'm not I'm not sure about that one. Okay, we're gonna take that guy out from the grate, and then we're gonna pop up here. Get this last guy who's in the confessional here. 
And there we go, everyone's safe. I'm gonna grab this Riddler trophy for a little extra experience. I normally wouldn't grab that one, but for marathon safety, best to play it safe. Glide over to the door here. Climb up the bell tower of the church, figure out who took a shot at us from where. Grab another Riddler trophy for another little bit of extra experience. And when we go up here, this is gonna be a little dialogue skip. So we're gonna turn to the left. Uh, Batman's gonna start talking. We're going to interact with the trap door, which will bring us different dialogue. Uh, this time we didn't get good dialogue RNG, so it was about the same length. But if you do get good dialogue RNG, the other dialogue is shorter, so that saves a little bit of time. Uh, this is Joker. I just broke those TVs instinctively, because you can. Um, he's telling us about the bombs in the room, which we had no idea about. Definitely no idea that anything was going on in here. Okay, we're going we're gonna to dive out the window as soon as he says, bomb us. Church tower is just gonna explode as expected. And now we're gonna head over to the steel mill because that's where Joker is. Um, something I should note in this part of the game. So this is normally where we would get the grapnel boost upgrade, uh, which is a super useful gadget. Basically, it just lets you boost off of things that you grapple to instead of just like slowly grappling them. It's super good and it's very fun to have it, but unfortunately getting it takes about three minutes and we checked and it only saves about two minutes over the course of the any percent run. So unfortunately it is not worth getting. So we're just gonna go right past it and optimally make our way over to the steel mill here. More grapple cancel. Try to slot our way into this little thing here. Then there's a uh, light post thing here. Cancel off of that. Whoops, that's not quite what I was going for. Grapple to this, and that gives us a perfect line up to this. And now we're at the steel mill. Uh, we're gonna enter the most dangerous way possible through the chimney. And uh, as you'll see in a moment, the chimney is uh, pretty dangerous. It's full of, it's full of lava. Uh, Batman doesn't care though. He, he knows how to deal with lava. Speaking of which, we're going to have our, another skip here known as lava skip. Uh, so basically you're in this, you know, you're in this chimney silo thing. Uh, you're supposed to go around in it. That's great and all, but if you go across it, you can save about four seconds just by gliding over the lava. So we're going to set this up real quick. Got to cool off the coals here as soon as they're cool. Whoops, went a little too early. No problem. I'm up here, drop down on the railing, jump over here, bounce off the wall, glide over here, bounce off this wall, fly just perfectly across. Excellent. Nailed it. Now we're going to make our way into the steel mill. We're going to learn about what's going on in here. Uh, while I crawl through these vents, there's not a whole lot going on, so we could probably read a couple more donations. Fantastic. We got $25 from Cartridge Blowers, my favorite host. And it says, it's me, it's me, it's Cardi B, and I've got a haiku for my fave host, Iggy. Aw. Arkham City rules. I like Batman a whole lot. Punch Joker real hard. Thank you. There'll be a lot of punching Joker. <laughs> I can't wait. Also got $25 from Dunk. Says, so glad to donate for the first time to GDQ. We need Doctors Without Borders more than ever, and we need to save the frames. Yes, indeed. Thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off some steam here so we can go join that fight. There were a lot of guys in that room when we last looked over there, but uh, now there's not so many, so it's not as much of a problem. And we're not going to use ground takedown cancels as much in this fight. There's just too many guys, so it's too risky. So instead, we're just going to whoops, throw batarangs at everybody. Whoops. All right, this fight's not off to a great start. So punch people, throw a bunch of batarangs, repeat until victory. Get a few more punches in here to build up my combo. Because I want to make sure I have enough experience for later on. Alright, that was a pretty decent fight. And uh, now Joker and Harley are up there in their office. We can't get up there yet, so we're going to go save a hostage that they took. They took one of the doctors, Dr. Stacy Baker. So we got to go save her real quick, and then we'll go confront Joker. Uh, so we got a little predator room here. So uh, as we already learned, stealth is very important. So we're going to do some stealth here. Okay, didn't get the batterings through the window, but that's okay. Just slide into that guy. Get a free ground takedown cancel. These guys have no idea what just happened. Whoop. All right, that's that's fine. It's not quite what I was going for, but... Okay, they're all taken out. And now I'm going to pull down this grate because this will save us a little bit of time when we backtrack later. And then we got another predator room. This is where the hostage is. So ideally, we're going to do a bunch of ground takedown cancels and also pull people off of ledges with the bat claw. That is 
pretty much the fastest way to clear predator rooms. So we're gonna ground takedown, cancel, pull that guy off, excellent. Pull that guy while he's climbing up the ladder. So he goes down. Now it's just these two guys in the room and we can finish them off very easily by doing something like this. All right, that's not quite what I was going for, but that actually worked out pretty well. And now we save the doctor. And now we have the wreck, which is, it just appeared out of thin air. Uh, the wreck is pretty much the most broken gadget in the entire series. You can do so many cool things with it, most of which involve interrupting animations. So, uh, all right, so there's a, there's a bunch of guys here. There's supposed to be a tutorial, but if we put down gel and we blow it up just when we enter the vent, then when we drop down, no tutorial, and we can just run right past them. Very nice. Okay, now we're gonna see the wreck in action and see how it's useful. So you can interrupt the animation of opening doors and then you can just run right through without having to wait for the animation. That's very nice. The other thing you can do is you can get something called standing storage. Uh, you store the state of basically holding the wreck while standing. That's gonna be very useful here. So let's just break open this entrance to Joker's office here. So we're gonna get that standing storage. And then what normally happens here is you grapple up here and you climb up and then there's a fight. But if you activate your standing storage and then climb up, then there's no fight and we have this unskippable cutscene. So this is like a minute and a half, so plenty of time for donations here. Awesome. We got Batman donating a $15 donation. He says, liar, Bruce Wayne isn't Batman. I'm Batman. Uh, thank you, Batman, don't punch me. We've also got Myrtle the Turtle with $100 saying donating for an awesome cause and an awesome speed run. Even though we're all safe at home, I want to see some hype in the chat. Thank you everyone for giving us G SGDQ this summer. Also, save the frames. We got time for more. I just want to take everybody's attention to the Valley Incentive that's going to be coming up right after this run. We get to visit the Cat Castle and we have less than $400 before we button that up. Come on, folks, let's make that happen. I got two simple words for you, Cat Castle. Let's see it. Let's go. Probably two more. Alrighty, we got $100 from a Dirty Laundry saying, AGQ at home, Doctors Abroad. Thank you very much. And we also have $100 from Dimon Kisu saying, Miss AGDQ, so hopefully this will make up for it. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, what we're learning in this cutscene is definitely not important at all, and that's definitely why it's unskippable. But uh, all we're learning here is that Joker does not know what Protocol 10 is, so we gotta find someone else who does. Catwoman didn't know, Joker doesn't know, nobody knows, it's a big mystery. So we're gonna make our way over to the old GCPD building, the old police building, and uh, Mr. Freeze is probably there. So maybe he knows what Protocol 10 is, I don't know. I don't really understand the plot at this point. So we're gonna do a little bit more precise gliding here, more canceling. Cancel off of that, go to another glide. I don't know what this thing is. I have no idea, but we're canceling off of it. And a crane. So when I get to the GCPD, there's gonna be a bunch of guys standing in front. Uh, you're supposed to like, they have guns, you're supposed to stealth them, but we can just completely ignore them. It's, it's honestly kind of sad how easy it is to ignore them. So we're just gonna fly up here. So here's this door, this shutter is closed. We can open it with the wreck. So I'm gonna stun them and open the shutter at the same time slide into them to get under it. And then we have the entrance to the GCPD. So we're going to get another radio signal. Uh, Penguin's thugs are around here for some reason. Maybe Penguin knows what Protocol 10 is, I don't know. But uh, let's, let's get in on his radio communication so we can figure out what's going on here. And we're in, hacking is very easy. You just point and click. Very, very nice. All right, so now there's a bunch of guys with guns in the GCPD, so we do have to actually take these guys out. So we're gonna pull this guy. Do a slam and a ground takedown cancel. Group of three here, easiest thing to do, chuck smoke at them, that startles them all, and then you can just run over here and pick them all off. And then the last guy knows he's gonna lose, he gives up and lets us interrogate him. And this is how you interrogate people. You just you just punch them in the face. You don't ask them any questions or anything. That's, that's definitely how interrogations work. Uh, we probably got time for a donation right now. We're just getting out of here. Awesome. $100 from Grana Saber MN says, while I don't have much to donate to give this year, I will give what I have managed to set aside. 
I will say, maybe next year Lots we can all meet in Minnesota again. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. All right, so now to get out of here, uh, we have to, we got the, the municipal code, so now we can do proper hacking, which is just a word puzzle. So we're just gonna, and there we go. Dissectionar, I don't know how to say that, but it, it's dissect in the police station. So, all right, now we're off. Uh, we're going to have a very big uh, um, glitch coming up. Uh, zips. So basically, we're going to break off of. We're going to get into a corner, and then we're going to do an animation cancel to break off of that corner. So you'll see the camera flick. That means it worked. And then when we shoot the wreck, whoosh, we just get launched entirely across the map. Very nice. Uh, the reason we think that happens is basically when you throw a gadget on a corner, Batman moves a little bit and then moves back into a position relative to that corner. But when you do the animation cancel to break off the corner, it's no longer referencing anything, so it just sends you to like the map origin, which in that case happens to be exactly where we want to go. All right, so we got another fight here in front of the museum. This is where Penguin's hanging out. And another thing, uh, when we interrogated that guy and didn't learn anything, we learned that Penguin had kidnapped Freeze. So that's why we're over here dealing with all this. Um, these guys aren't being super helpful. That was fine. Right, hack our way in. And there's a little tutorial cutscene that plays when I, uh, just gonna throw batterings behind me and hit a camera for XP. There's a little tutorial cutscene that's supposed to play here, but if you just run forward, it doesn't happen. So we're just gonna run right into these guys. Slide, ground takedown cancel, knock out that guy with a batarang. And we're gonna hack our way into the museum, but, uh, hmm, something weird's going on. We can't, uh, we can't connect to the back computer. Uh, clearly, somebody has set up some uh, some communication disruptors that we're gonna go destroy. So we gotta we gotta leave the museum, destroy three jammers, and then come back, and then we'll be able to hack the thing. So when I leave here, the, at the first jammer, we're gonna have a big fight, and I'm gonna get the first upgrade purchase of the run, which is going to be the multi ground takedown and the thing that you need before it, which is just this bat swarm thing, not super useful. So the multi-ground takedown is what it sounds like. It lets you do essentially multiple ground takedowns at the same time. So let me see if I can set this up here. Very nice, I actually managed to take out all of them. So this is a jammer. Uh, as you can see, punching the jammer is kind of slow, but just like we can cancel the animation of opening doors, you can cancel the animation of destroying the jammer. Very nice. We're just gonna fly right past that. That's the first jammer done. We're gonna go to the second jammer. The second jammer has a bunch of guys with guns at it. Uh, they want us to fight the guys with guns. We don't want to do that, so we're just not going to. And after we deal with this jammer, we're going to do a storage zip. So it's kind of similar to the corner zip we did earlier, except instead of breaking off a corner, we get corner storage and we take it with us and then we can zip from anywhere. So what you're gonna see here, I'm gonna get corner storage here. All you have to do is just aim the batarang and then you have it. We're gonna grapple up here. We're gonna do the animation cancel, the same one we do to get standing wreck storage. And then we're gonna switch to the batarang. We're in that corner state. And then when we throw the batarang, we just get zipped way out of bounds. Very nice. So now we're just under Arkham City, which is funny because Batman's dialogue right now is actually saying that the last jammer is underneath Arkham City. So that's exactly where we're going. We're gonna go here. This will load in an area. We're gonna glide under it. Uh, we're gonna do something called a wreck jump here. Uh, basically, you interrupt the animation of diving off of a ledge with shooting the wreck, and you just get launched straight up in the air, just like that. Perfect. We're gonna glide with it. None of this stuff is real. This area isn't actually loaded in. All the stuff we glide through, it just looks like it is. Okay, and then there's another room with guys with guns. Uh, we're supposed to fight these guys, but that's no fun, so we're just gonna go straight for the jammer here and take care of it. All right, that's that taken care of. Uh, what did I just grapple to? Okay, we're fine. And so we got in out of bounds, so naturally we're gonna get out from out of bounds. Whoops. There we go. Another corner zip, just like before. We're gonna bounce off this wall to initiate this glide. So take about three dive bombs to make it. We're gonna get to like this sort of ledge here. And then we have to load in the middle area before we can actually get back to the overworld. The middle area just being the subway station. So we're just gonna grapple up here. We're gonna land right down here. You can see the text on screen says something along the lines of Metro subway station. Okay, now we're back in bounds. Now we're gonna go back in the museum. There's a bunch of guys there. So we're gonna try to skip this fight. Same way we skipped the fight in front of the church, or we tried to skip the fight in front of the church by just landing behind them and opening the door before they see us. Excellent, nailed it. 
Uh, I'm actually really low on experience right now. It just occurred to me, so let's hit that. Oh, we're good. Never mind. I also missed the penguin anyway. That's hilarious. Okay, the password in the museum is dinosaur. I wonder why they picked the password dinosaur in a museum. Is it perhaps because there's a big dinosaur right at the entrance? That might have something to do with it. Speaking of which, we have another major, we have the first like major skip of the run coming up known as dino skip. So let's just finish off these thugs, get some storage. And got to talk to this undercover cop here who is in the prison trying to figure things out. So we can we can interrupt the animation of opening doors. We already know that. But another way we can use that is to essentially deload the room we're currently in and load the next room. And then after we've done that, we can basically leapfrog over the next room without actually entering it at all. So we're going to... We're out of bounds. We're not really out of bounds. The room's just deloaded. So we're going to do a fairly precise zip setup here. Dive, dive, dive to the right, then do our trusty old animation cancel, and then we're going to batarang zip. All right, that didn't quite work, so let's just figure out where we are and go from there. Try it one more time here. Okay. There we go. That's what I expected. So now we are way out of bounds, so we're going to glide as soon as you start to drop off. Dive bomb, pull back up again, turn to the right, glide towards the loaded area, but not too close, but also not too far. Oh, uh, I think I'm stuck. Oh, that's unfortunate. That happens sometimes. Oh, we can probably read off a donation while I try this again. Hey, fantastic. We got Althanos coming in with a $100 donation. They say best of luck, chicken. And we've also got a $10 donation from Jackie. They say, let's go, chicken. Good luck on the run. I'll try this one more time the hard way, and then if that doesn't work, I'll do the slightly easier backup for it, where you do two zips instead of a zip and a glide. Uh, zip again. Oop. All right, I guess we're doing the backup. <laughs> oh, or not. All right. Not sure why my glide dropped there. That was a little weird. I'll definitely just do it the safe way this time. This skip is probably one of the more difficult ones in the game. There's just, there's so much going on. And it's also like, it's it's very tricky for new people to learn because there's there's so many things that you have to combine all at once that you've only done like maybe one or two times before this. Okay, so it's the same zip setup, but instead of gliding way out, we just glide back towards the loaded area and then land right about here. Set up another, er, yeah. Set up another zip. Perfect. So now we're inside of the hallway that we want to be in. So we go back a little bit, go to the left. Whoop. All right, my mouse wheel's acting a little funky. Okay, run over here. Dive, pull back up. We're going to be kind of hugging the ceiling here and then get a grapple point. There we go. All right, not, not a perfect dino skip at all by any means, but we made it. That's what matters. So now, when we go through this door, the game doesn't really know what's going on. It's a little confused because you're not really supposed to be here at all. So everything's just going to unload and we're going to collapse. But if we reload checkpoint, the game will figure it out. So just do that real quick. And now we are at yet another pretty uh, difficult skip. So what's supposed to happen here is you're supposed to put gel on this wall, but then like a cutscene interrupts you and you have to do a fight. But if we cancel the animation of placing gel, the gel will try to go back to the original position. Didn't quite work that time. Let me try it again. And you can have it catch on the wall. Okay, so you see it teleported back, but we didn't get it on the wall there. If we get it on the wall, we can blow it up without having the cutscene or the fight. There we go. Just like that. Perfect. Third try is not bad at all. All right, now we got to save freezes in this little container here. Uh, this is microwave. Because, I don't know. Um... So because we came in here a weird way, uh, we actually, I'll wait to buy the upgrade. Um, the There's a gate that's kind of blocking our way out. And what you're supposed to do is hack that gate from the side you're supposed to come in on. But since we're on this side, we specifically need the range upgrade. And the reason I delayed buying the upgrade is because if I like failed menuing and accidentally bought the wrong upgrade, I would be completely soft locked. So get to play it safe there. Gonna play some gel just to mess with those guys if they try to chase us. Then we're gonna do some more wreck jumps. That's the fun part of the game, just kind of bouncing all over the museum here. 
So that part of the museum was rescuing Freeze, and now we have to go get something from Freeze's suit, which is in a case over on this side of the museum. Hit that penguin just for a little extra experience. So there's supposed to be a tutorial when you go through this door, but if we interrupt the animation opening of the door, and then we look down as we kind of crouch through it, keep looking down, whoops, that's okay. Just don't look too far up. And then we get a free double takedown on these guys and everyone else is pretty much perfectly lined up for us. Uh, this guy might do something weird. He's being a little weird. Okay, we're good. Pull this guy off the ledge. Excellent. Take this guy down. Do another ground takedown cancel and lead into a smash. That was very good. Very good predator. We'll just hit a couple breakables while we're down here because we have to wait for these undercover cops to stand up and realize that they're safe now and they can talk to us. Oh. Come on. Yeah. All right, we're good. Skip some dialogue. Uh, we get a new gadget, which is the uh, disruptor. This will be useful for when we confront Penguin because Penguin now has Mr. Freeze's ice gun, but now we have a thing that can turn off the ice gun. So let's go confront Penguin. Pretty much gonna cancel every door we go through in this game because we can, and it just saves like about a half a second over going through it normally. I'm gonna knock this thing down, so if I mess up the wreck jump, I don't fall in the water. Oop. It was a little low, let's try that one again. There we go, that's more like it. Up, and then we can pretty much glide all the way down this hallway. Very nice. So coming up here is Penguin. Uh, he's just in this room where there's only one way to get to him. And he's also got the ice gun. So we're just going to slide under all his attempts to shoot us. No problem. Uh, for some reason, at this place, he just decides he's not going to shoot us. So we're going to turn off the ice gun and we're going to try to punch him. Oh, we got the whiff. Very nice. So uh, yeah, if you punch just early enough, it doesn't actually connect. And then you get that. Very nice. Actually really happy I got that. All right, so now we have the first boss fight of the run, Solomon Grundy. He's a big zombie dude who is healed by electricity. So uh, how you fight him is he's got this, these generators, so we're just gonna blow these up. Uh, the placement for the placing gel to blow them up is super generous. Like I'm placing them like basically along the edge and it's still counting. Uh, if you're playing on hard, it's not nearly as generous, but fortunately we're playing on easy, so. We don't have to worry about that. And uh, unfortunately, Penguin figured out the strategy of pressing the button harder to to uh, do more, I guess. So eventually he'll just keep pressing that button and Grundy gets healed again. So now we got phase two. Phase two, same idea. You know, we're gelling the generators, but he can be a little annoying with his attacks. Looks like we're okay here. Yeah, we're good. Sometimes he can jump at you and it's really hard to avoid that. Right, that's Grundy dealt with. We just gotta finish him off here as soon as he finishes falling over. Just gonna finish him off real quick. But no, looks like we're not done yet. It's gonna drag us over this thing. We're gonna have to struggle. We're gonna have to really struggle. Uh, you just press the A button on your controller kind of fast, and that's that's what struggling is. It's a very, very real struggle. So, let's get out of this, and then we have phase three, which is the same thing we've done before. Blow up the generators, but it's even trickier because these things are basically always on now, so you have to nail the placement of the gel. Very nice. That is phase three done. Uh, fun fact about getting standing storage with the wreck. Uh, we did it during like when we were hanging from somewhere before, but it turns out you can also do it during certain cutscenes. For example, we're just gonna pull out the wreck here and Grundy's heart just explodes entirely on its own. We don't know what happened. Batman definitely didn't do that. All right, now we're gonna go fight Penguin here. Uh, he's got a grenade launcher, which is kind of annoying and not really a problem at all. We're just gonna slide under and then we're going to just stun him to death. And that's Penguin. So now we learn that uh, Freeze and Penguin did not know anything about Protocol 10, 
But uh, maybe Rachel Ghoul knows about Protocol 10. So we're going to go find that villain. Um, one of his ninjas was in here and left and left a blood trail for us to follow. We're, uh, we're supposed to follow the blood trail. But it turns out, if you already know where she's going, you, you don't even have to go to where the end of the blood trail is. You literally can just go straight to the actual objective. So we're just going to make our way out of here. And after we call in Alfred, Alfred's getting the line launcher for us. That's a pretty useful gadget. We're actually not going to grab it when we're supposed to, though. So we're just going to, instead of doing anything we're supposed to, we're just going to do another zip out of bounds. Going to look up to reduce lag on this one, because this one can be kind of finicky. Excellent. Perfectly out of bounds. Going to glide down. Pull up through this door. Perfect. And then we're going to go straight to this vent. We're not supposed to be in this room at all. And we're going to come back here again while we're still not supposed to be here. And then we're not going to re-enter it at the proper time. We're just going to completely skip it. So glide through this kind of awkward room. Not really a problem if you know how to deal with it. But like getting through that room casually is super weird. Okay, and now we have a predator room. So, you know, the usual fare, guys with guns, hostage. Uh, this time I can't use detective vision though until I take out that one guy with the jammer backpack thing. So we'll take him out of the game immediately. Then we're gonna deliberately not ground take down cancel a couple people. Pull this guy off the ledge, try to pull this guy off the ledge. Okay, that guy didn't quite cooperate, but that was still, did I take out that guy? I did, that was a very good private room. And then I blew it by grappling to the wrong spot. Okay. Before we can rescue her, I have to uh, get storage here. And I'll just grab this for looks for experience because I didn't see where we were at. Oh, we're fine. Okay. Rescue her. Dive away. But then Batman always returns to save the day. Okay, so like I mentioned, we were supposed to get the line launcher. And that gadget is extremely useful. You actually don't need it, but it's faster to get it. So we're just going to go quickly grab that. So as you can see, no line launcher in the gadget wheel. It would be up at the very top above the bat claw. Okay, so one second. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, and what do you know? We now have the line launcher. Funny how that works. Yeah, if you just, if you load that room for some reason, the game just gives it to you. All right, so now we have yet another major skip. This one is known as dead parent skip because there's a cutscene with your dead parents and nobody wants to see that. So let's just skip that. Uh, we, this door forces you into first person, so we have to cancel it and then go through and then come out again. And then another, another thing similar to downer skip where you're leapfrogging over an area after zipping, so we're gonna do a glide here. Just glide along this area. There's a bunch of invisible walls here, so you want to stay kind of away from it until you get closer to this actual corner. Uh, we're gonna hug the ceiling for a little bit here. Dive down, pull back up. Climbing here can be kind of tricky, but it looks like we are okay. Excellent. Then we're going to cancel this manhole, same way we cancel a door. It's a little tricky, but if you're doing it on a controller, it's not too bad. So this door is supposed to be open, but since we didn't watch the dead parents cutscene, uh, it's not open. So we got to do a little bit of fancy parkour here. So we're just going to climb up. Whoop, whoop. All right, that didn't work out. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. It's a little uh, tricky. And here we go. Okay. There we go. Climbed up here. Walk to the end of this, and then Batman will stand up, which lets us line launch. Bounce off this to climb up this wall. Jump onto that thing over there. Glide over onto one of these pipes. Perfect. And then we can just line launch straight over to the objective. And nice. Uh, so this is Talia. She doesn't know what Protocol 10 is either. Uh, we're supposed to be talking to Raish, but he like wants us to do this trial thing where we like prove ourselves or whatever before we do any of that. Um, we Unfortunately, there's no way to skip it. We have to do these trials. It's basically just like a gliding tutorial with a little bit of combat. There's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, we definitely have plenty of time for donations while this goes on. Awesome, I got quite a few on mall since it's $250 and an opportunity for me to do my Kevin Conroy impersonation by saying simply, I'm Batman. Thank you on mall. Uh, I tried. We have an anonymous $500 donation. It says Bat Claw, Bat Vision, Bat Explosives, Bat Freeze Grenade, Bat Donate. Thank you so much. We also got $25 from Gressman. 
Let me do my Adam West here. Holy speed ones, Robin. We have to get to the bat castle. Oh wait, it is cat. Fine with me. Bats are like cats, which cannot fly. And you're in luck because we have reached the cat castle in Cinefer Valley. Y'all are going to be seeing it. I just want to say thanks for the celebratory. Meow. Thank you again, everybody. So, uh, as you saw there, I canceled the uh, chalice. That doesn't save any time or anything. It's just, uh, you can cancel basically anything you can interact with, with the wreck. So, that's just a fun little thing you can do. Alright, so, as you see, we have a gliding trial. Uh, as soon as the game lets me, I'm gonna open the upgrade menu and buy two more upgrades. We're gonna buy the critical strikes, which basically, if you time your punches correctly, then you get two times combo instead of one. There we go. And the other one is the combo boost, which basically what that does for us is we can do ground takedown or multi ground takedowns at an eight combo, in, or sorry, at a five combo instead of an eight combo. So between critical strikes making our combo increase faster and the combo boost allowing us to, we require less combo, it just makes multi ground even more overpowered than it already is. All right, we got a little bit of a fight here with some ninjas. So ideally what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to place some gel here. And then we're going to kick this guy. Okay, that's that's excellent. We knocked him clean off the ledge. That was exactly what we wanted. Perfect. Uh, now there's this little pit. This pit's going to open up for us. Uh, we're just going to try to drop into it the, the like exact moment that it opens up for us. Excellent. Uh, where are we? Are we gonna make it? Yeah, we're good. Cool. Something I should mention here, so I grabbed RC battering storage, uh, remote control battering storage, when I did dead parent skip, and I want to keep that storage all the way until the end of the Ra's al Ghul boss fight, which is like, that's like a 10 minute section of the game, where if you die, you reload checkpoint, anything like that, you lose that storage. There is a backup if I lose it, but obviously it'll be much faster if I can utilize that storage. So hopefully nothing bad happens here. Famous last words. Another glide trial. You can go before he starts, or before he finishes talking. He just, he just likes to posture, I guess. I don't know. Another fight here. This one is a lot harder to knock people off in, but we'll give it a shot here. I'm not gonna use gel this time. We're just gonna try to punch the guy towards the edge. Sometimes that's enough. Was not this time, that's okay. So we're gonna juggle between these three and we're gonna try to avoid that guy until the very end because the last guy is almost always a one hit kill. So you can juggle between everybody except one guy and then finish off the last guy in a single hit. This is another pit we gotta drop into. So we're just gonna wait until it flicks. Perfect, and drop in. Probably got time for another donation here. Perfect. Sweaty Rob sends us a generous $50. Says, I had to donate during Arkham City since I was a tester for this game and I love seeing the features players have found. Good luck to the runner who looks suspiciously like Batman's voice actor, Kevin Conroy. You know, now that he mentions it, uh, Chicken, you, you have some to... Okay. All right, thank you, Sweaty Rob. That's awesome. All right, we're going into the Rachel Ghoul boss fight here. Uh... There's, there's kind of a little bit going on here. So first of all, let's just get into it. And then I'm going to get standing wreck storage right away, which will be useful for later. Cause he does, he does a thing where he like kind of pushes you around the map, but if you pull out your standing wreck storage, then he doesn't, it stops pushing you. So we're just waiting for him to realize that he's here. There we go. He's gonna spawn a bunch of sand ninjas and dash at us. We're gonna dodge away from that and then try to take these guys out as fast as we can. Whoop. Missing the first punch is always a great way to start a fight. Ugh, this is unfortunate. Oh my goodness, everything is going wrong here. All right. It's not even a hard fight. All right, okay, so now that's part one. Part two here, he's gonna drop up here and try to push us back. We're gonna pull out our standing wreck storage so he doesn't push us back. And then we just have to shoot him with the wreck three times. Uh, we're gonna do double shots with the wreck. Just just shooting and quick firing it at the same time to uh, maximize our chances of hitting him. Now we got a little quick time event with countering. And uh, while this goes on in another cutscene, we have time for more donations. Awesome. Gun Makuma sends us $25 in the form of a haiku. It says Batman and Joker 
The eternal rivals, or besties forever. Food for thought, thank you. Also got $200 from... Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go, go. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Dead Bob sends us $200, says, Finally in a good enough place to donate. Glad to give it to a good cause. Hey, we're glad, too. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Alright, so when this ends, uh, there's gonna be, like... 30-something ninjas pop out of the ground and attack me all at once, and you have to counter all of them individually. Fortunately, we have no, counter bound to the mouse wheel, so we can just take care of that right away. And then we just take out these ninjas as fast as we can. We're gonna bad rank some of them. They usually dodge them, but if they're already attacking you, or just in some cases, they decide not to. So we're gonna abuse that as much as we can. That was very good. That was a very good second phase. And now he's gonna pop out of the ground again, like before. So we're going to pull out our storage and shoot him three times again. It's a little harder because he's the ring here has less openings and is moving slower, so the double shots are even more important. Okay, we got him. So now there's there's supposed to be a cutscene at the very end of this fight, like a pretty long one too, but we're going to try to skip that. So first he's just attacking us here. And we're going to punch him, and then at the end of punching him, we're going to try to pull out our storage. Excellent. We're going to stun him, and then we're going to throw Batarangs at him. For some reason, the game thinks the cutscenes are the Batarangs are part of the cutscene, so they count, and then we just get a teleport punch on Raish, finish him off. Very nicely done. After we skip this cutscene. So now this is where the having the RC Batarang storage is important, because we're going to zip out of here. You can't get out of here normally, because we came in here from out of bounds, so we're going to go right up against the door. That's okay. Do our... Interrupt, pull out our storage, and throw the RC Batarang. Perfect. We are out of bounds in the hallway. And then we just line launch all the way down to the door. Perfect. Sometimes you sometimes you hit those bodies that are hanging, and you have to... Uh, whoop, there we go. And you have to line launch again, but that was a perfect line launch. And then we have to reload because it's a similar to Dino Skip. Okay, then we're gonna wreck jump off that just to save a little bit of traversal time going through here. Then we're gonna, whoop, grapple to the wrong thing. That happens a lot in this game where you just grapple to something you didn't mean to grapple to. A lot of a lot of learning this run is just like adjusting to the nonsense the game will throw at you and just like knowing what, what can happen and how to deal with it on the fly. So we're leaving the same way we came in. And uh, when we get back inbounds, the uh, the ward or sorry the mayor of Gotham City has been thrown into this prison. Uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, we think he sort of has something to do with what's going on here though, so we're gonna go interrogate him. So we're just gliding out of bounds here. We're gonna grapple up somewhere around here. There we go. And then we're gonna go over here. He's right over here. So like I said, we got those upgrades that'll make uh, combat a lot faster. And you will see that in a moment. Boom, done. That just, that entire encounter is over. And we can interrogate the mayor freely. Just hang him upside down from a building, not learn anything, because he also doesn't know what Protocol 10 is. And then we're just going to leave him on that rooftop. He'll be fine. Nothing bad will happen. Okay, do some gliding. So now that we've, we're done with Raish, uh, we took his blood for some reason. Maybe his blood knows what Protocol 10 is. I don't know. Uh, we're going to go back to Freeze, because Freeze is the only person who knows how to analyze blood. He's, he's back where he's supposed to be at the GCPD, so we're going to make our way over there. Yeah, that's not quite what I was going for. There we go. That glide path's relatively new, so I'm still kind of getting used to it. Okay, that's that. And then we're going to do another... There's more more guys here who are supposed to fight, but just like last time we came here, we can just open this up, slide into that guy. You you want to deliberately slide into people because he'll like turn to hit somebody, and then you'll not go through the door. Okay, now we have the Mr. Freeze boss fight. So the really cool thing about this boss fight, if you don't know, is that he adapts to everything you do to him. So we're going to start off here with a glide kick. So we kicked him in the face, and after we finish taking him down here and he gets back up, he's gonna free he's gonna do something to the air that makes it so we can't glide anymore. So we have to come up with a different strategy. Uh, we're on easy, so we only have to do four things to him. If you're playing on hard, you have to do like nine, I believe is the number. But uh, it's pretty easy to line things up. 
on easy. So we're gonna line launch kick him in the back, just like that. And then we're gonna use that disruptor thing that we got earlier in the game. We were only supposed to use that to stop Penguin, but uh, we can use it to stop Freeze too. And I'm gonna try to time it so he's on the stairs when I disrupt him. Didn't really take much timing at all because he'd move forward a bit. So he falls down the stairs. No matter, like, even if he's at the very top of the stairs, he goes all the way down at the end of that. And that perfectly lines us up for our final takedown, which is this weak wall. So as soon as he starts moving, cup out. And that's Freeze. So we're just gonna knock some sense into him, I guess. I don't really know why we're fighting him. I, I don't know. But uh, unfortunately, Batman has started not feeling super well, and uh, he's started seeing and hearing things. Having a bit of a rough day. Uh, we'll deal with that later. For now, we're just gonna get the freeze grenade gadget. This is extremely useful, both casually and for the speed run. Uh, we obviously need it to get out of here. Turn off that steam with it. So there's, when we leave the GSPD here, there's supposed to be a cutscene with like a helicopter, but we can skip that cutscene by abusing the game's checkpoint system. So while you have to wait here a little bit anyway, so we're gonna, while we're waiting, we're gonna buy this upgrade. And then we're going to create a checkpoint by catching the remote control batarang, which is a challenge. And then when we reload checkpoint, we'll just be somewhere in the general area. Uh, it'll be on top of the GCPD outside. So that allows us to completely bypass that cutscene trigger. And it also gives us a free opportunity to buy an upgrade, which is very nice. So there's a bunch of snipers here. Uh, Vicky Vale's helicopter crashed. That's the whole deal with that cutscene. And now we gotta go save Vicky Vale. I don't know why she was flying so close to a prison, but whatever. Uh, so the upgrade we got, the bat claw disarm. We can pull people's guns out of their hands and all the way off buildings even. So those guys can't do anything. Uh, we're gonna grab some bad rank storage. We might need that later. And here we are saving Vicky Vale. So coming up, we have uh, Stacy Skip, which is probably the trick I've struggled with the most. It's Definitely one of the harder ones in the game. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, but we have a lot of good backups for it, so no matter what, we should be able to get through it. So first, uh, we have to get gargoyle storage. It's like standing storage, but it's on a gargoyle. So we get that on our wreck. That's very important. So we can't use the wreck anymore. Otherwise, we will lose that storage. And we need to enter an area from out of bounds, and we need to cancel the door that we enter from. But we don't have the wreck, so how do we cancel doors? Well, it turns out if you press, uh, if you if you alternate fire a gadget at the exact same time as you open a door, it will do a cancel with almost any gadget. Uh, we're gonna do it with the bat claw. It's frame perfect, so there's a very good chance I won't get it. But we'll give it a shot here. Also, walls are optional. Uh, we just we just fly right through there. Uh, if we don't cancel this door, the game will think we're in a predator room and we'll have to reload to progress. Okay, we didn't get it. So the game thinks we're in a predator room. I can actually show this. If I try to go through this door, it'll tell me to secure the area. So we have to reload. That's unfortunate, but that's okay. Our backup for this is pretty reasonable. So all we do is we do a wreck jump off this ledge. Go up here, and we're gonna line launch all the way to that thing way off in the distance. If you had the storage, you could do a gargoyle zip, and that would take you basically all the way to where we're line launching here. So that'd be obviously be a bit faster, but getting that door cancel is pretty tricky, so I'm not surprised that I didn't get it. Okay, so we're gonna do a fairly precise glide here. Um, this feels kind of off. I think we're okay. Famous last words. And we are stuck inside a wall, so we gotta do that again. Shouldn't have said anything. Uh, we got time for some donations while I try this again. Sounds good. Long way down since it's $50. They say, had to donate during Arkham City since I just replayed it. I'd be mad about how much faster this run is than mine if it wasn't so fun to watch. As always, thanks to the runners and staff behind the scenes for adapting to this year. We've also got Moldy with $20. They say, very happy that you made the impossible happen and brought us a GDQ, even in these times of pandemic. Greetings from Austria. Hey, grüß Gott. Okay, this feels a little better. There we go. So we're just gonna play it safe here, throw some batarangs, make sure this is where I think it is. Then we're gonna line launch across here and go to this door. And there we go. Then we have to reload. Uh, once we reload, we'll be into a predator room. 
There we go. Menuing's hard. So, in this predator room, uh, similar to usual, we're gonna try to ground takedown cancel and bat claw everybody. So we're gonna take that guy down. We're gonna throw a batarang at this guy. Nice, we knocked him off the ledge. So that's basically a free takedown. Sometimes these guys don't really cooperate with the bat claw. They just like dodge it constantly. All right, come on, do something. So you just gotta let them like come at you and then they'll forget that you have the bat claw and just let you pull them off. All right, that was a fine predator room. All right, so when we go in here, there's gonna be a sniper here. Whoops. And uh, that's supposed to be dangerous, but uh, we're Batman, so we're just gonna we're just gonna go right into him. Take that sniper shot like a champ. Uh, Harley Quinn's tied up here. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, we're not gonna worry about it for now. So upcoming in a room, there is there are two snipers up top, and there's a bunch of guys down at the bottom we're supposed to fight. But we can get through the whole thing without anybody even knowing we're there. We just chuck smoke under them, which somehow makes its way into the room magically. And then we can just run right past them all the way to the door to Joker's office. Or, sorry, the uh, the funhouse where Joker is. So we get to punch Joker a lot. So this is a really hard fight. So... And that's it. That's the whole fight. Just kidding. There's actually a bunch of thugs that are going to come down. And this actually will be the hardest combat encounter in the game. There's a lot of... There's just... There's so many different enemy types that you have to juggle. And, like, holding your combo through everything that's going on. As well as, like, trains flying through the arena in the middle of the fight. It's kind of crazy. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take out these guys. Try to get a multi-ground on everybody that's in right now. Uh, you have to take out Joker last, so we're just going to keep him on the ground so he can't bother us. While we get another multi-ground in. We're going to manually place gel on the ground over here. Uh, manually place gel has more range than quickfire gel, so it's very important that we do that while we wait for more guys to come in. Then we've got this big hammer dude. Uh, you were supposed to fight him way earlier in the game, but we skipped that, naturally. All right, this is not a great lead-in. Fortunately, the Titan did charge, which means we don't get to take him down with the gel, but we do get to take down a fair number of people. Yeah, that was a good multi-ground, so let's just... All right, I don't know why that guy didn't get in on that, but that's fine. Just stun the Titan, get Joker out of the way. Take down the Titan. We're going to cancel taking down the Titan, same way we cancel ground takedowns, and then just finish off Joker there. That was a really good fight. Okay, so uh, now we finally actually learn what Protocol 10 is. Uh, basically, the master plan is for Hugo Strange to stage like a breakout and like give weapons to all the criminals and stuff, make it look like bad things are happening, so that he has an excuse to literally bomb the place. So that's kind of bad. Uh, we're Batman, we're gonna stop that real quick. Uh, we're not gonna do it the intended way though. We're supposed to scan a bunch of helicopters, get some master code, and then like go up the go up the tower normally. That's not very fast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out of bounds, same way we came in to the steel mill. Instead of going that way though, we're just gonna drop down and go this way towards the, uh, the sewers and the subway and all that. Uh, so now I should talk about freeze grenade climbing. That's what we're going to use. So you may have seen a video, if you're familiar with this game, called Escape from Arkham City, where basically uh, if you go to the edge of the rail of a railing and start chucking freeze grenades, you just start getting pushed up in the air. It turns out we can actually abuse that. Oh, that was almost bad. And we can, we can abuse that by getting railing storage and then using the freeze grenade climbing off of our railing storage. So let's get our railing storage. There conveniently is one right here. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're gonna we're going to cancel this door and then very quickly pull out our storage and start freeze grenade climbing. Very nice, and we made it. Five. So I'm just mashing right trigger here to throw freeze grenades. Uh, I think the the ideal number is 28. You can do 27, but uh, it's not as safe, and you can. He'll get a little bit of a slower climbing animation. I didn't actually count this time because I was talking. So, and then we go to sort of the middle of this area here. This is where the elevator actually is. Then we're gonna climb up here. This will be seven grenades. Five, six, seven. And then you'll see everything load in here. And now we're gonna go to the very top of the tower, which will take 58 freeze grenades. So you can read some donations while I pull this off. Perfect. We got Papa Joe sending us $25. They say, great cause to donate to. 
Doctors Without Borders is an amazing organization. A round of applause and chat for all the runners and tech crew this year. Let's make like a bacon, raise that dough. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Papa Joe. And y'all can raise some dough for that Ori Will of the Wisps bonus game unlock. We're at thirty thousand dollars out of thirty-five. Five thousand dollars until what? Like uh, midnight my time. That's about five hours. We can make that happen. Let's get some more GDQ in, people. Let's do it. All right. So the reason the reason I could grapple up before I threw the fifty-eighth grenade, but you don't want to. If you grapple up too early, the tower doesn't load. So we're gonna drop down, and then Batman will get stuck there and grapple up. You don't have to get stuck there. That's just funny that that happened. And then when we look up here, hopefully there'll be a bit of a chug. Perfect. And then you can see the lights and the gargoyles up there. That means everything loaded in correctly. And now we're going to climb the tower quickly. Uh, we have to hit this trigger. Otherwise, things won't really work. And then we're going to glide over here, cancel off this thing, which hopefully will give us a pretty good amount of height. And now instead of going through this part of the tower normally, we're going to wreck jump off of this and then make our way over here. And the reason this is good is both, obviously, it's just fast, but also if you skip going through the tower normally, the AI in this room is a little broken. Uh, they don't actually appear in detective vision, and they also just don't hear anything. These knockout smashes are supposed to be super loud, but uh, they, they, can't, they can't hear anything. They're just completely deaf. It's great. So we're going to pull this guy down. Excellent. Pull this guy down. Didn't quite get him, that's okay. I'll just wait for him to get back up here. Come on, there we go. And where's the last guy? There he is. And that's that predator room. They get alerted when you when you do certain actions, but they can never actually see you or do anything. All right, so now we're gonna confront Hugo Strange here. Gonna have a chat with him about this whole Protocol 10 thing. We don't really approve of it. Uh, he's gonna pretend that he's not scared here. If you actually check his heartbeat in detective mode, he's like terrified. But he's he's putting up a good uh, appearance here. So yeah, we're just gonna just gonna yeah communicate with him. All right, so uh, we've headbutted Hugo, and then uh, one thing leads to another, and now Rachel Ghoul is dead over there. Uh, Hugo Strange is dead. The towers exploded. Uh, what happened? I don't know. But uh, Joker's here. Uh, we got this cutscene's unskippable, so we got time for some more donations. All right, fire sends us fifty dollars. They say thanks for all the hard work everyone is putting in to all this fun. GDQ proves that games bring out the best in people. Stay safe and stay awesome. Also got Niff with one hundred dollars. They say thanks for putting on this wonderful event for a great cause year after year. Thank you for the generosity. We also got $250 from Sox. They say, I admit I was a bit worried about the however necessary remote event this year. Missed the crowd, but it still feels every bit as exciting. Massive respect for the tech crew for coordinating all of this, and it'll only make the next event in person that much better. Thank you so much. Okay, so once this cutscene ends, uh, there's a bunch of snipers guarding Joker. He's standing outside of the Monarch Theater. So we gotta make our way over there and we gotta take out all these snipers. This would normally be like really slow and painful, but we have that bat claw disarm upgrade, which will make this kind of a joke. So let's just make our way over there. Uh, you, can, you can see all the lasers, like it's kind of nuts. Doing this casually is like actually terrifying, but uh, we can just yoink, 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 and yoink. So that's four of them down. There are however many there are left. I didn't actually count. Well, that guy's sniper rifle. Gonna take down this guy. They're also all deaf and a little bit blind to the thing they're not directly looking at. So that works. Well, that guy's sniper rifle. And now there's just two left down at the bottom. So we're gonna drop down there. Also, you may have heard that one bit of Joker dialogue was in English. Uh, I guess they just forgot to translate it. I don't really know what happened there. All right, that's all of them taken out. We're gonna go into the theater and uh, plot twist. Clayface was here the whole time. I, he was Joker sometimes, but not always. I don't know, it's complicated. Anyway, uh, he's the final boss. We're gonna fight him here. So we're just gonna let him hit us because his taunt after hitting us is faster than him doing another attack animation. Okay, he's gonna jump at us. So we're gonna dive out of the way and then blow up these explosives that are just sitting conveniently in the corners of the room for us. I don't know if you're supposed to be able to blow those up with the explosive gel, but it works really well. 
All right, and then his next attack is gonna be a roll. So we'll just let him roll into it. That's definitely the intended way to fight the boss. Okay, we're gonna run over into this corner, chuck a freeze grenade at him to finish him off. And while he's doing his little animation there, place down our next gel. And then we're going to use Batman's sword fighting skills that he never gets to use, but somehow has. He's just, he's just the best at fighting big monsters with swords. Right, take that hit deliberately. He's gonna jump. Blow that up, perfect. All right, this, this is pretty much in the bag for this part of Clayface. Take another intentional hit here. And nice. Okay, so while we finish him off here, I'll explain what's going to happen in the very last part of Clayface. So, uh, what's it gonna be? So, there's going to be a part where he's basically just hiding in the ground and he sends up a bunch of clay minions to fight you. And you fight a bunch of the clay minions and then he pops up, starts shooting at you, makes himself vulnerable eventually. And then you chuck a freeze grenade in his mouth and that does a quarter of his health worth of damage. Do that four times and you win. But it turns out you can throw freeze grenades at him in between when he's supposed to be vulnerable and it still does just a little bit of damage. So if we abuse that as much as possible, then we can actually take him out in three phases instead of four. And uh, time will be coming up pretty soon here. Sword is conveniently just gonna not kill us here. Very good. That would be some unfortunate RNG if it just landed in just the wrong spot. And now we now we get to use our sword fighting skills even more. And since these aren't people and we can't kill them, uh, Batman has no reason to hold back, so he's just gonna go nuts. Throw four freeze grenades up front, and then just take out as many of these guys as I can quickly. Very good. We're going to run over into this side of the arena because his shots actually can't hit us. And then we're just going to spam freeze grenades as much as we can. Okay, that was pretty good. Then we're going to try to take out a bunch of these guys. Ideally, leave somebody back in that corner so we can bounce back to them pretty quickly. Perfect. Just like that. Chuck more freeze grenades. And this, these are very good spawns. This is like the best I could ask for. Whoop, and then I messed it up. That's okay, though. Now. I think we can still get him. Oh, I missed it by, like, one freeze grenade. Oof. That's unfortunate. That's okay, though. It was pretty easy to get him back up. I missed him by two. Okay, time will happen. Time will be when I jump into Clayface's mouth here. Okay. And time. That's the end of the run. Uh, I'll just do a very quick round of shoutouts. So, uh, first of all, if you like anything you saw here today and or potentially want to see more or even learn how to do some of this stuff, go to speedrun.com slash Arkham City. Uh, we have guides, we have resources, all that stuff. We have a Discord server. Uh, definitely join that if you're interested. Uh, shout out to just the whole community because this isn't a solo effort. Uh, I, I sure make it look good, but uh, the the this has been like nine years of effort from a lot of different people who have put a lot of time into this game. And uh, lastly, I want to give a very special shout out to Kojo, who ran this game at AGDQ 2015, and that was actually my first exposure to speedrunning. And now the whole thing has kind of come full circle where I'm showing off this game and uh, hopefully inspiring the next generation of Arkham speedrunners. All right, that's going to be it for me. Stay tuned. We have a lot of really cool runs coming up. And yeah.
Thank you so much, Chicken Nuggets, for that incredible run of Arkham City. Showing Batman doing whatever a Batman does. Still got a lot of love for Chicken Nuggets during that run. Got Silly Person with $25 saying, Chicken Nuggets is an amazing player and his commentary is also amazing. GG. Thank you for saying what we're all thinking. Also, during that run, we have received a donation from the Yeti. Oh yeah, for $20,000. They say, hey y'all, Yeti here. What an amazing day for speedrunning. We're so happy to share that thanks to all your orders of event tees and other goodies. We've now raised $40,000 for Doctors Without Borders and their amazing work. Thank you for your support. Huge shout outs to the tech, staff, tech, and volunteer teams. This online event has been masterfully programmed and managed. Keep up the great work. And thank you, Yeti. Y'all are amazing. All right, we're going to have some brief words from Twitch for you. So don't touch that browser tab. We will be right back. Hello everyone and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online. Uh, my name is Sent and as always I'm here to tell you all about some of the absolutely amazing prizes that you all can win by donating today. Uh, yeah, that's right. We have a ton of amazing prizes. And as always, I just want to remind you, you can always, at any point in the marathon, head over, check out the donation tracker. You can check out the prizes page there from there or just click check out the prizes page if you're on uh, gamesdonequick.com's main site. You'll see all the information you need to know on upcoming speed runs that are going to be in the marathon, on upcoming incentives you can put your donations towards, because keep in mind, you don't have to specifically donate for the prizes. You get automatically entered into the chance of winning them as long as you donate the minimum amount. And of course, you can see all of the amazing prizes we have, as well as when they're going to be available and how much you need to donate in order to possibly win them. Now let's talk about some of those specific prizes. Prizes like uh, these absolutely beautiful portal socks from our friend Annie Jess. Um, I mean, look at them. They are portal-themed socks. They are amazing. You got an orange sock and a blue sock, just like the game, orange portal, blue portal. Just um, make sure when you take them out of the dryer, you don't put them inside each other. I, I hear that causes some space-time problems. We really don't want to get into that. But the uh, socks together, they come as a pair, obviously. One would hope, but obviously. $10 minimum donation for them. Uh, so make sure to get those donations in tonight. 
We have a couple of beautiful pieces of artwork to talk about here. Uh, so from our friend Puzzle P, we have this beautiful painting of uh, GDQ's new mascot, Velocity, the speedrunning raptor. Frankly, uh, I love this painting. I love the colors. I love the style. Puzzle P always does this amazing style that just reminds me of like the doodles you would put in your notebook in high school, but really elevated to a great artistic level. I have no idea how she managed to get the... Um, the like gray texture in the GDQ, but I love it. Of course, it's also covered in glitter, um, but it's it's doing a very good job of adhering to the painting. I am not covered in glitter. So props on Puzzle P for that as well. $15 minimum donation for the painting. It's beautiful. You want it. I want it. I can't have it. Remember, only you can win prizes and only you can do so by donating. So make sure to get those donations in. Um, from our friend Ryan, we have this beautiful Sleepy Kirby. Uh, painting. This is an acrylic on canvas painting. It's absolutely beautiful. I, I love the depth of the blue. I love how adorable this Kirby looks. I mean, look at him. He just, he's so happy. He's sleeping on a cloud. He doesn't have a care in the world. To, to be like Kirby right now, it would be wonderful. It's also a $15 minimum donation. Guys, get your donations in for this. It's so good. I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. Shoutouts to Ryan so much for sending in that sleepy Kirby painting. Now, also for a $15 minimum donation. And from our friends over at I Am 8-Bit, we have this beautiful Rare poster. It's celebrating 30 years of Rare games. Can you believe Rare has been making video games for 30 years? I feel old. But I also recognize so many of the games and series on uh, this poster. Of course, we have Banjo-Kazooie, we have Perfect Dark, uh, you know, Viva Pinata, Battletoads, Conquer. Uh, snake rattle and roll. I love snake rattle and roll. Uh, somebody is once again going to point out that I mentioned snake rattle and roll before Killer Instinct. Don't worry about it. There's Killer Instinct. Of course, next to Killer Instinct, we have the game we don't talk about anymore. Nobody, no, that that one, that one didn't happen. Don't worry about that. Um, anyway, it's a beautiful poster. Evokes a lot of feelings of nostalgia. And again, it's a fifteen dollar minimum donation. Make sure to get those donations. In. Roll that up real quick. Now, from Myri, we have something that we really never have had before, as far as I'm aware. And this is like a traditional cool woodblock print of uh, the Witcher logo. I really love this idea. Again, uh, from my understanding, basically, you take a block of wood, you kind of inversely cut out the pattern you want, uh, you cover it in paint, and you stamp it against one of these pieces of paper. Uh, so each one of these, and we have a couple of them to give out, uh, all have a different um, you know, texture to them. They all have some different colors to them where the paint has bled over into each other. They look super cool. They're super unique, and I love the design. $20 minimum donation. Um, and like I said, we have a few of these to give away, so make sure to get your donations in. Uh, last but not least, I definitely want to talk about a bundle of games we have from our, our friends at GOG. It's a, a bundle of games from their site, GOG.com. Uh, they have a bunch of different games available that are uh, appearing in this marathon, including some newer stuff. They have, like, uh, I think one of the keys in there is for Bloodstained, uh, Ritual of the Night. I think there's a key in there for uh, Blood, for Dusk, um, Streets of Rage 4, Shovel Knight. So many awesome games, and you can head over to the tracker, check out the description of that prize, because it has all of the keys that you will win if you win that prize uh, listed there. Now, of course, I can't talk about the great prizes we have without mentioning our grand prize, which is a custom replica from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. Uh, you get your choice of one of several different really cool replicas that they've made over the years. And um, here, I'm going to go pick one up and show it to you real quick. Everyone can enjoy my beautiful scalp. But, um, you know, replicas like this amazing Hylian shield here. This thing is absolutely wonderful. Now, it's a $200 minimum donation uh, to get in on that grand prize, but it's cumulative. So that means, hey, you donate $20 right now to get in on everything we just talked about. You donate $20 a few more other times during the marathon, and you're already there. Again, huge shout-outs to Heroic Replicas and to Dave from Heroic Replicas. Uh, he's been our contact and really been putting in the work and making some cool stuff for us. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, everyone, that's going to do it for me. Thank you all so much. Again, make sure to get those donations in. We have so many cool prizes coming up. And I want to throw you back up to the front as we get ready for our next Run Valley.
Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020. Powered by Twitch. We've got Birdo with a $12.50 donation. They say, as someone who takes a lot of calls for a local set of community health centers, I'm glad to see some more love for and donations for Doctors Without Borders. Increased access to medical care is so important. I'm hoping for this donation to be the first of a few this week. Shout out to Chu for that poster of the Mana Beast and Flammy. I'm talking about that an incredible poster last night. We have plenty more prizes all through the week. So I want to say thank you so much. 